So you're engaged, now what? If you're like me, I have been planning my dream wedding since I was about, I think maybe seven years old. And I thought that I had every little detail of my dream wedding and how I wanted everything. And then when I got engaged, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, where do I start? It can be very overwhelming and a lot of women just put off the planning because they don't even know where to begin. Now, on my channel, I have been getting tons and tons of requests from you guys to do follow me around vlogs about our wedding planning because I've been updating on Facebook and on Instagram that we've been going to churches and checking out different venues and a whole bunch of different appointments and a lot of you guys have been asking if we can actually film them or vlog them to show you guys our progress and all of that but honestly it's a very personal time in our lives and I kind of just want to live in the moment not have to worry about bringing along my camera and getting the right shots and stressing about how the vlog is gonna come out I really want to be able to fully immerse myself in the planning and in my appointments so sadly I'm not going to be vlogging the appointments for you guys but what I am gonna be doing is a wedding series so this video is kicking off my wedding series and the topic of this video is gonna be you're engaged now what what do I think are the first steps that a woman should do once she's newly engaged after this video I'm gonna be coming out with my own personal wedding updates so I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my personal progress what I've done what still needs to be done what I'm planning on things that I was finally able to cross off my list and basically all my own personal progress. But like I said, today's video is gonna be for those newly engaged girls. If you feel completely overwhelmed and you don't even know where to start, this video is exactly for you. Now, in my experience, whenever a person is newly engaged and you go and tell your friends and you tell your family, they all wanna know everything. They wanna know when's the date, what's the colors of your wedding gonna be, what is your dress gonna look like, where are you gonna have your venue, is it gonna be during the summer, is it gonna be a winter wedding? A million questions are thrown your way and a lot of times you're just like, I don't know, I just got engaged last week. Like I have no idea, I haven't even thought about it. People expect you to know these answers right off the bat and honestly, no one really does. So my number one tip for getting started is creating a wedding binder. This has helped me so much throughout my wedding planning because it keeps everything organized. I have one place to go to put all my papers or if I'm looking for papers, I know exactly where to go, my wedding binder. So I do wanna show you guys this book that I do love. It was actually sent to me by one of my subscribers, but this is more of a scrapbooking type of wedding book and it says Our Wedding Day and it was a very lovely gift from her and I can't wait to fill this out kind of after my wedding when everything is set in stone because this type of book is something that I really don't want to get messy with. I want it to be like a little keepsake and I want to have all the writing nice in there and pictures and all of that. So this is kind of like a little scrapbook and I went over this in detail in another one of my monthly favorites videos. So anyway, this book I'm putting away for now because right now I need a book that I can get messy with. So what I did is I went out to Target and I got everything that I needed to make my own messy wedding binder. And this is the one that I'm gonna have as a keepsake, but this is the one that I bring along to me to appointments if I need to jot something down, if I need to put papers in there, put contracts, anything, this is what I always bring along. So you can see on the front that it's just a regular turquoise binder. I just picked out color that I like. I used a regular piece of printer paper. I stuck it in there and then I got these little 3D stickers also from Target. I thought that they were pretty cute just to decorate. And I do plan on um, typing out on a little piece of paper our special day or our big day, our wedding day, something like that just to have a little title here. But I do wanna show you guys the inside of this binder. So what I did is I bought the binder, I bought loose leaf paper, I bought paper dividers, and I also bought paper keepers to keep any contracts or any papers or any type of business cards or anything that I need to throw in there. So everything pretty much has a space. So it's a little bit heavy to hold up, so I'm gonna set it down on the table and tell you guys exactly what I have in here as far as the dividers. So I think I have about 10 dividers, and I'm gonna read off the sections that I have. So the first one is the ceremony. Everything ceremony related goes in there. For example, any church papers, any type of contracts from the church I put in there. Then I have the reception next, which is gonna handle all the venues. Um, I have ads here for venues that I wanna go and visit. I have business cards in here. I have a whole bunch of different stuff, anything venue related in that section. Then I have the bridal party, and I wrote down all the girls in my side of the bridal party, my maid of honor, and the bridesmaids. And then I have Richie's side, his best man, and his groomsmen. And then I have all their contact information or anything like that. 
And then I have a section for the attire, which is gonna be my dress and the whole bridal party's wear. Then I have entertainment and photography. I have cake and vendors. I have decor, flowers, and favors. I have a section for the registry, and then I have a section for the honeymoon. And then after each section, I have loose leaf paper if I need to jot any notes. And then like I said, I have these little contract holders. And basically what it is, it's just a piece of plastic like this with an opening on the top. So I can stick in there any contracts that I want to make sure that they don't get destroyed or damaged in any way. And then if I have any business cards or whatever I need to throw in here that I can't write down, I like to put into one of these so that everything stays nice and organized. All the material for this binder cost me around $15 and I'm telling you guys this is a lifesaver. I feel like I'm the type of person that I need everything organized I need to know where everything is and everything in its place So the number one step that I recommend is go out and make a bridal binder next step that I recommend that you do is get inspired So for me, it's through magazines and through websites and you can find inspiration for anything for what you want Your dress to look like for what you want your venue to look like for what you want the colors of your wedding to look like You pretty much just want to start getting a mindset or brainstorming what you want your actual wedding to look like. So two websites that I have been extremely obsessed with is WeddingBee.com. There's just so much inspiration there for invitations and venues and pretty much anything wedding related. WeddingBee.com is a great website. And then also Pinterest. I don't have an account because I kind of just like to snoop. I just like to look. I don't post anything myself. But if you just type wedding or bride into Pinterest, a whole bunch of pictures will come up and there's tons and tons of inspiration. If you're one of those people that prefers to have like a hard copy in front of you, there's tons of magazines. Number three, I recommend sitting down with your fiance and actually picking a date, which we actually did and I'm so happy to announce that we actually booked it at the church and everything. So our wedding is going to be May 31st, 2014. We really wanted to have a spring type of wedding. So that's really important for you guys to pick what type of season you want to have your wedding. Some women want to have a winter wedding. Some women want a summer wedding. A lot of people like spring weddings. So whatever your personal preference is, you and your fiance, you need to talk about a date that you can kind of have as a target and keep in mind what season that's going to fall in. Okay, so the next tip is discussing a budget and you really need to sit down with your fiance and make sure that you guys are on the same page with this because some women want a $50,000 wedding and some men will want a $5,000 wedding or vice versa. You need to make sure that you're both on the same page. Make sure that it's something realistic. You don't want to start off your life together with a huge loan that you need to worry about paying off this huge debt. Me and Richie are personally paying for our own wedding. I know a lot of people's parents pay for their wedding so you just want to make sure you know where the money is coming from and what ballpark you're working with. Next, you want to brainstorm your bridal party. This is a really important step because you need to ask each person in your bridal party if they want to be your bridesmaid, if they want to be your groomsman, your maid of honor, your best man. Usually there's some type of formal invitation. So you want to sit down with your fiance and just discuss who you want to be in your bridal party. Make sure that you both agree on the maid of honor, the best man, the groomsmen, and the bridesmaids. Usually it's also for pictures important to have the same amount of bridesmaids as groomsmen so I personally am having four bridesmaids and he will have four groomsmen and then we will have a maid of honor and a best man. Next you want to create a rough draft for your guest list and basically what we did is we created two guest lists. One is the must have people that need to be there no matter what like the people we would die if they were not there and those are our must have people and then we created an additional list with friends that maybe we're not as close with people that we would like to have there but it's not the end of the world if they're not there. You also want to keep in mind that you don't want to invite people that you're going to see in your pictures years later and you're going to notice, wow, I never talked to him or I never talked to her after my wedding. Why did I even have them there in the first place? A lot of venues you have to pay per head and it can get very expensive. So you want to make sure that the people that you have at your wedding are very important to you and are gonna be in your life for a long time after your wedding. Next, you need to decide if you want to have a church wedding or if you're gonna have a wedding at your venue. It's also important to think if you want an indoor wedding or an outdoor wedding. And for your celebration, are you gonna be doing it at a home? Is it gonna be something very low key? Or are you going to go ahead and rent a hall? These are also very important factors that you should be discussing with your fiance. Next, are you going to be hiring a wedding planner? If you're having a really big wedding, it might be a good idea to hire a wedding planner to deal with all the stress, all the little details that come in planning a huge wedding. 
and again you also have to see if that's within your budget so think about if you want to hire somebody to help you or if you're like me and you like to take care of every little detail yourself next I would start looking into bridal shows usually there is a little bit of a fee to get in normally they're around 40 to 50 dollars but there's a lot of different connections that you can make in a bridal show a bridal show will have booths of a whole bunch of different type of companies that have everything to do with weddings and there you can hire people you can network anything from cakes flowers decorations entertainment lighting limos foods photography you can see examples of their work you can compare pricing and you can also just go to be inspired and those are all the tips that I have for a newly engaged couple I know that it kind of sounds like a lot it can be overwhelming but it really is just the very tip of the iceberg and overall you definitely want to remember to just have fun throughout the whole experience don't turn into a bridezilla because if you're like me I'm only planning on getting married one time in my whole life it doesn't really leave for a good memory if you're grumpy or stressing every little detail or have a panic attack if something doesn't go your way you want to remember to do everything together have fun with it and just really live in and soak up the moment so congratulations to any of my new brides to be out there and again this is just kicking off my wedding series so now you guys can look forward to personal wedding updates discussing my progress so thank you guys so much for watching if you have any additional tips just leave them down below have a wonderful rest of the day and I will see you all soon